This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo. This is the show where you can ask me, John Rettinger, any question you've got from the wide, wide world of technology. Don't know what phone to get, not sure what tablet you can pick up, don't know what mobile operating system is right for you. This is the place where you can ask all damn questions. Up this week, we're going to talk about the rumored iPad mini. We're going to talk about the Microsoft Surface. We're going to talk a little bit about what's in the future for Techno Buffalo and a lot of stuff in between. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's go ahead and get started. First question comes from user Josh who asks, Hey John, do you think the iPad mini will get the widescreen form factor, the iPhone 5, or the same form as the 9.7 inch iPad? Josh, it's a great question. Uh, I would expect that the new iPad mini is going to share similar dimensions to the larger 9.7 inch iPad, meaning 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So get used to seeing black bars on the top, black bars on the bottom. I think the iPad mini is going to follow the same cycle as the regular size iPad. I think once the regular size iPad or new iPad goes widescreen, I think the next generation iPad mini will follow that same path. We are gonna see though the lightning connector in there and a few other differences. Not sure if we're gonna have a retina display, that one is still sort of up in the air. But from a dimension standpoint, I still expect it to be four by three. User Fahad Muhammad asks, hey John, do you think the iPad mini is a good idea? If so, what do you think will set it apart from the current iOS devices? So that's a great question. Whether or not it's a good idea, only the folks at Cooper can answer that. I will say it's a bit of an interesting product. When Apple unveiled the original iPad, there really weren't that many tablet competitors out there. Microsoft had tablets, certainly, but as far as the internet and the palm of your hand and the ease of use, there wasn't anything like the iPad when it was first announced, and it was a revolutionary product. Same thing with the iPhone. There were plenty of other phones that did a lot of different things, but there wasn't anything that optimized touch in the same way that the iPhone did. It really ushered in the age of capacitive touchscreens, and they were leading the way sort of through that path. The same isn't so true, though, with the iPad mini. There are a lot of seven inch tablets out there, 7.85 inch tablets in there. So Apple is entering a crowded market. They're not creating their own market like they had before. Uh, so whether or not it's going to be a success, it's going to really determine, I think, based on what the competition does. Are you willing to pay an extra $100, $200 for an Apple device of the same size, or you can pick up an Nexus 7 that does the same thing? It's going to be a bit of a tough sell based on the pricing scheme, especially when you consider iPod Touch at $300. You're not really sure where this iPad mini is going to fit in price-wise. I'm inclined to believe, though, we're going to see an 8 gigabyte model come in at $250 to make it a sort of a close competition with the Nexus 7. From a business model standpoint, it could be quite interesting. As Steve Jobs in Walter Isaacson's biography, uh, they asked him about cannibalizing your own products. And he said it's better to cannibalize yourself than have your competitors do it for you. So will Apple's 7-inch iPad take away from sales of the larger iPad? Yes, absolutely. But at least that money's staying inside of Apple. And the iPad mini is really just a gateway into the App Store where Apple makes an absolute killing. So if you, they even take a loss on an iPad mini, which I doubt they will, they're certainly going to make it back in spades and applications that are bought through the App Store. So whatever price they decide to charge for it, that really is yet to be seen. But I do think it's probably going to end up making Apple boatloads of cash. User Siba asks, Hey, John, do you think the new Surface RT tablets will cause the death of the PC? That's a great question. Actually, I think quite the opposite. I think it might be the rebirth of the PC. We are really at a paradigm shift. And what paradigm means is sort of a new way, a new aspect of doing something. And I think we're seeing really a shift on how people interact with computers. Certainly tablets like the iPad sort of ushered in the wave of tablets, but they are limited as far as what they can do. They are great for media consumption, not so great for media creation. Things like the Microsoft Surface and Windows 8 tablets taking that one step further. So you get the same benefits you get of a device like the iPad or an Android tablet, meaning you could browse the web, you can check your email. You could run a full Microsoft Office suite. You could run full applications. You could run full desktop applications right on your tablet. You could throw on, like the Surface for example, the touch keyboard, and you can have a full laptop with you anywhere you want to go. So you get the full power of a PC when you need it, and the tablet capabilities when you want it. So do I think it's going to kill the PC? No, absolutely not. I do think though there's going to be a lot of struggle with getting used to Windows 8. Folks that aren't so tech savvy and are used to Windows looking the same way for every generation are really going to be thrown back when they get Windows 8, especially if they're upgrading on older computer doesn't have a touch screen. Using the modern UI can be a bit unintuitive without your finger. So I think there's definitely going to be a bit of reticence from perhaps an older generation of Windows users who are really not sure what Windows 8 is going to be. But I think once they get new hardware and hardware that's equipped with a touchscreen, there should be a higher adoption. That was a long convoluted way uh, of answering your question. I hope that helps. That's great stuff, John, but I'm going to take some time to thank our wonderful friends at GoToMeeting. Meetings are essential to the way we work. It's an opportunity for different voices to be heard, share ideas, problem solve, and develop creative solutions. But if your team is spread out to different locations, coming together can be an impossible task. Unless, of course, you use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. The 
powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with clients and coworkers online. A great example of online collaboration for us at Techno Buffalo would be to cover big events like the iPad mini event where we can all come online together and say, okay, you can make this article, I'll cover this story. You can make this image, I'll make this video. Tools like GoToMeeting are invaluable for stuff like that. No matter where everyone is located, GoToMeeting allows you to share the same screen, making it easy to be on the same page. And with built-in HD video conferencing, you can see each other face to face. So it's easy to launch or join a meeting from anywhere. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Don't wait for this special offer. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the try it free button and use the promo code techno. Again, be sure to use the promo code techno. Go to meeting. Meeting is leaving. Back to you, J-Man. User G Dog asks, Hey John, when is the new Techno Buffalo redesign coming? What is it going to be like? So we are in the late stages of testing what I'm calling Techno Buffalo 3.0. I will hope that we'll see it sometime before the end of the year. Uh, so before 2013, Techno Buffalo 3.0 will be here. It's gonna bring a lot of really neat features. Uh, but the best thing that it's doing and things you're not gonna see uh, it's a complete uh, redesign from code base zero. We had a lot of bloated code in the website. For those of you that are using Techno Buffalo from day one, you know that we initially launched, we had sub blogs where users could create their own blogs. Uh, we had a social network built in and a lot of outdated code. Techno Buffalo 3.0 is doing, we are starting from scratch. We are starting from no code at all, no plugins, nothing, and built that sucker right up. Uh, but it's also coming with a huge redesign for how information is going to be presented. And sometime in 2013, later on, we might even see dedicated apps uh, for Techno Buffalo. But a lot of cool things are in store for how you're going to interact, ways you can view content. If, say, on an Apple event day, you don't want to see any Apple content, you can go ahead and view content, just focus on Android or filter out content. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff that you couldn't do before, and really excited to be able to share it uh, with you guys. So that's it for this episode of Ask the Buffalo. I'm your host, John Rettinger. Thank you for sticking around, for asking your questions, and for overall just being awesome. Be sure to check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I'll see you guys in the next video.